Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing another video for you guys. Uh, finally the video in regards to the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction and how this is going to affect your specific sign. Now we're going to go very quickly into what this means uh, globally. Now we've experienced uh, the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction. It takes roughly about 20 to 30 years for Jupiter and Saturn to go into every single zodiac sign. The massive expansion that's happening now is that we are going to be going into a different element. So what does that mean? Um, <clears throat> historically speaking, we've had uh, the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction go into the water element. Uh, this is the Renaissance era. This is where painting, uh, where poetry, where this uh, explosion of creativity and creative outlook, uh, being in tune with our emotions, uh, took place. Now, as well as a lot of travel was done through boats, obviously the element of water. Then we forward to when Saturn and Jupiter conjunct in fire elements. Uh, this was around the time that we experienced wars, uh, colonization, taking, basically taking uh, by force. Obviously, the element of fire is aggression. Uh, then we go into the 1800s up until now, and we've been experiencing these this uh, massive um, changes in regards to building, in regards to um, creating businesses, in regards to structure. Uh, remember, Saturn is all about, um, uh, you know, structure and the Earth element is all about control. Uh, of course, we've been seeing these past couple of months, the negative side, right? The saddle side of uh, the element of Earth, which has to do with control uh, through intimidation, etc., being able to control the masses and stuff like that. Uh, but all of this coming to light and uh, being able to go into this era where we're entering now, December the 21st, which is going to be uh, Saturn and Jupiter conjunctioning in Aquarius. Uh, so this is the Aquarian era. We're going into the element of air. This is a new transition, you guys. So this is major, like I said, on a global scale, as well as it's going to impact every single zodiac sign, depending on what house it is happening. Um, now, for, you know, the the... When we're talking about Aquarian energy, and this is air energy that we're going into. So with these past couple of months, the, you know, all this chaotic type of energy we've been dealing with, Aquarian, going into Aquarius, this is bringing a lot of, um, a lot of healing, a lot of, you know, Aquarius is all about humanity. It's all about the preservation of life. So we're going to start to see progress in that sense, uh, like I said, humanity and coming together as a group in, in a higher consciousness. Um, so a lot of healing is going to be happening the first couple of months of 2021, as well as massive expansion in regards to science, in regards to uh, thinking ahead and in the future, making plans, progression in regards to uh, education, higher learning, um, for some of you guys, career changes for others, uh, this could be taking on or learning more about a specific subject. Um, some of you guys transitioning from nine to five type of office jobs to self-employment. Others, uh, this could also represent uh, working from home. So again, a lot, a lot of transformative energy here. Now, how is this going to affect you, Leos? Now, uh, major career changes, uh, Jupiter and Saturn entering into your seventh house, affecting your personal life, you guys. Seventh house is all to do with partnerships. Now, in astrology, when we look at the seventh house, there is a lot of connection here. The fifth and seventh house in regards to your partner or your life partner. Um, so again, this is the seventh house is being activated here. So for a lot of you guys, this is an area that is going to be highlighted for you for the month of two or not the month, the year 2021, anything to do with relationships and those in a current relationship where you're experiencing a lot of challenges. This is a positive thing because it's really going to be testing your partnership only because again, Jupiter is expansion. It's blessings, benevolence. Now, Saturn is a malefic planet. 
uh, that will only bless you or will only make things happen for you if there is effort put into it. Uh, Saturn is not about temporary. It is about the long-term goal. And so again, when we're talking about relationships, you're really going to be challenged in the sense of uh, making sure that this relationship was built on a, sol a solid foundation. And if it was not, as an example, if you've been in a relationship on and off, you're going to be challenged in the sense of coming to the realization, is this relationship even worth it? Why? Because Saturn is asking the major questions, right? Uh, Jupiter's like, yes, I'm going to bless you. Want a relationship? Boom, you have it. But Saturn is there to tell you, is this the type of relationship that you want for the next coming 10, 20 years? If it's not, you need to grow out of that cycle in order to be able to open doors and pathways to a new beginning. So again, your relationship is being challenged only to deepen this connection and to strengthen it. Now, if it's not built on a solid uh, foundation, a lot of breakups, you guys. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, uh, in regards to, um, let's see, where was I? Okay, sorry about the whistling, you guys. It's been, I've been doing these videos. I've been, this is like literally, I don't know, I'm in the 12th or 13th hour. Um, it, it's a long day, you guys, so sorry about that whistling. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, like I said, Saturn really challenging that energy. Um, it's not going to make it easy. Uh, but it is definitely going to bless you in the long run. Uh, so again, Saturn is about building about a solid foundation, like I was saying, and for long-term connections as well. Jupiter rules your sixth house. Uh, so it's also going to be in a placement of an angular position. Uh, a lot of changes and transformations here in areas of life for you. Venus passes by your fifth house as well, like I was telling you about partnerships. So around this time frame, for you Leos out there that are single or have been single for a while, a soul connection comes in. For others of you, this is a lifetime partner that's coming in for you guys that is going to start on a building of a solid foundation. It is not something that is going to be sporadic or something where you're going to be questioning this connection. It is a slap in the face. I am here. Love is here. Take me in. <laughs> that type of energy. So... For those of you guys that are single, a person may be entering for you in 2021 where, excuse me, where you guys feel very strongly this connection and it's like inevitable, you can't deny it. For others of you, if you're already been or you've been dealing with someone or kind of casually dating, you may actually come to this understanding like synchronizations start to happen that are leading you to believe that you guys are, you guys were meant to be at this time and space in time, or in this moment in time and space. Um, and what they're saying here is they're basically giving you the green light um, to really take this relationship to the next level. So again, positive, uh, positive influence and energy when we're talking about partnerships and relationships. Now also keep in mind, Partnerships can also be partnerships in regards to business. So for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that run your own business, opportunities in regards to partnering up or working with other people is going to be very beneficial for you for the year 2021. Um, so again, your fifth house and your seventh house being activated. Support to your love life. For those that are single, love is coming in. Um, you know, something more meaningful and something that is going to stick this time. So again, uh, kudos to you. All right, my lovelies, let's get into your readings. Um, so I'm going to see exactly what is coming towards Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising. In regards to the year 2021, spirits, please give me 12 sets of cards to represent all months, all 12 months for the year of 2021. Please allow me to see their challenges, opportunities, or new beginnings that are coming in for Leos, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Uh so these predictions are going to be connected to those of you guys that have Leo in your sun, moon, or rising. <clears throat> Just wanted to put it out there. All right. Leo, sun, moon, rising. <clears throat> One more. Here we go. Okay. So this is January. <whistles> Massive changes and blessings coming your way leo i don't know why i keep whistling you guys 
you know when you've been like really really working hard towards something <laughs> And you're like so exhausted, but at the same time, you're excited about it. So you just act weird. Does this happen to you guys or is it just me? Probably just me. Anyways. Um, okay. So we are, let's see, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. I need to stop that. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, you guys. Probably annoying you at this point. I'm just exhausted. It's been a crazy year, you guys. I am pushed to my limit. <sighs> okay, let me center myself. All right, Leos. All right, here we go. January, you're starting off with the... Six of Wands and the Nine of Cups, emotional fulfillment. For some of you guys, this is an achievement. Uh, this is getting accolades. This is getting attention. Uh, the sun shining on you. For some of you guys, feeling very empowered, rejuvenated. Um, I'm hearing for a lot of you guys, you're feeling victorious about a situation that is unfolding and unfolding to the betterment of you. Uh, Nine of Cups can also represent wish fulfillment. So for some of you guys, I feel that January is going to be a heavy month when we're talking about finding purpose or when we're talking about going towards a purpose uh, and materialization more than anything. I feel that the hard work you've been putting this year um, is definitely you're going to start to see the fruits of that labor in January for sure. Uh, blessings coming your way, unexpected blessings as well. And they're telling me unexpected news. Uh, this is news that you were definitely not expecting in a positive aspect and directly connected to your career or your finances. Now, for the month of February, we have the Ace of Wands here with the Ten of Wands. This is a new opportunity for you guys. This is a offering that's coming through for some of you guys going up the ladder. For others of you, this is uh, setting out to a or to start a new journey, a new project, Something that you're undertaking, yes, it's going to be challenging. You're taking on more responsibility. But I feel that ultimately it's going to bless you. Why? Because it's going to push you to be the best that you can possibly be, Leo. I think that what they're saying here is for the month, or not the month, sorry, for the year 2021, Leo, you're going to be feeling very blessed. You're going to be feeling like if you've been experiencing a lot of karmic cycles ending, uh, in the past, you're feeling like you haven't been lucky in certain aspects. I feel that the sun is radiating on you. It's like, yes, blessings are coming your way and new opportunities. Uh, stop complaining about it and start enjoying it. So this could be you feeling very blessed and worried about something going wrong or about delays of any shape, way, or form. But what they're telling you here is trust spirit, trust the universe they have been looking out for you. Yes, you've been through major difficult situations, even transformative situations. But the positive in that is that it was building your character. It was building your person to take you to a higher level, to take you to the next cycle in your life where you're not only going to be bountiful, but you're also going to be blessed. And it is not blessings that are unexpected. It's blessings that you have earned or blessings that you have based on your good karma is what they're saying remember saturn is the karmic planet so again uh, a lot of ending cycles in regards to karma no longer dealing if you feel like up until now especially in partnerships you've been dealing with like the same energy like different people but kind of the same type of energy that's quickly coming to an end there is no longer that connection to the shadow side uh, or people being manipulative towards you or you maybe even taking on manipulative tendencies when it comes to relationships. The Ace of Wands is also igniting the passion. So for some of you guys, you're really determined and focused in the month of February. Uh, highly, highly feel like it has more to do with opportunities and career where you're going to be feeling like your time restricted. Um, Saturn also rules over time. So it could be a feeling of like not having enough time. Uh, this could be even losing the balance in regards to your career and your personal life. So there may be a need uh, to reevaluate or for time management um, or to go out of your way to make personal time for yourself and for your loved ones. 
Now for the month of March here, we have the High Priestess with the Knight of Pentacles. For some of you guys seeking advice, um, you may be going to an Earth Energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo, uh, someone that is very highly intuitive or someone that uh, is going to give you an advice to the best of your interest. The High Priestess is a energy that only speaks or only comes up when there is a need for some type of clarity. It's like they're speaking their truth. The High Priestess always knows everything that's going on behind the scenes. But she will only address or she will only speak when it is necessary. So I feel that this advice or this person that is coming to you in the month of March or that you may be dealing with, um, listen to them. I feel that for some of you guys, this could be a mentor. This could be a person that is really going to take you under their wing, uh, teach you the ropes or teach you something in regards to either a spiritual connection or pretty much feeding your soul or for others of you. This is an individual that is coming almost at a tipping point where you feel like you're a bit lost or like something in your life is challenging you. That's when this connection happens or that's when this person comes through for you, bringing light and being able to refocus you, encourage you uh, into remaining or into remaining uh, that maintaining that focus in your goals and your aspirations. Now, for the month of April here, we have the Star card and the Ten of Pentacles. Major, major, if you can see here, the Ten of Pentacles, it's like there is obviously Pentacles here, right? Duh. But there's also like, oh, wrong one. There's also like a path, a new path forming. And it's almost like a key. And in the background, there is like this major like mansion castle type of thing and you see the pathway so i feel that for a lot of you guys you're taking on a new path for some of you guys the star card symbolizes uh illumination it also speaks about um wish fulfillment or seeking or following or trying to make happen your wishes come true the ten of pentacles is definitely there to tell you that this manifestation is coming through for you for some of you guys, this could also represent purchasing a new home or purchasing your first home. For others of you, this is really um, the month of April. I feel that it's definitely going to like put you up there in regards to career, in regards to your profession, and almost like the stars aligning in your favor. Um, this is something that you're very passionate about and that you really uh, are going to you know, submerge yourself in the waters of imagination or how far you can push it. And the sky is the limit for you, Leos, for this month of April. Now, going into May, <clears throat> we have here the Death card and the King of Cups. So this is transformative energy. This is an ending cycle for some of you guys. This is the release of something old and embracing a new beginning. For some of you guys, this could be a new person coming into your life. For others of you, um, this could be, especially those of you guys that are single, you may be meeting a the life partner that we were talking about, you may be meeting this person in the month of May. Uh, the death card is, like I said, transformative energy. This is Pluto's energy. This is addressing certain psychological or things, suppressed emotions or traumas from uh, early childhood that are coming to surface uh, to bring to you a lot of healing, to bring to you more understanding or deeper understanding of your reactions when we're talking about partnerships. So for a lot of you guys, this is like aha moments. This is being able to pinpoint, oh, this is why I react in this way when I don't get attention or when I feel like my partner's energy is going somewhere else. And in reality, they're just busy, but this is my traumatic as overreacting. Well, for some of you guys, this is like coming to an understanding that it had something to do with an underlying issue in regards to your early childhood. Now, <clears throat> going into June, we have here the Four of Swords and the Seven of Wands. This is you standing your ground. You may be dealing with a situation that is in connection with the family dynamic or family siblings, uh, parents as well where they may be requesting or asking for you to take a side uh, with the four of swords here and the seven of wands they need to learn about boundaries and you need to make sure uh, to teach them if they don't know so what this means is 
if you don't feel like you can side with anyone or like they're both in an erratic type of mentality whoever's making you choose or side with them walk away from this but let it be known that you're walking away because you don't have to choose because you don't have to agree with people's bullshit sometimes and walk away from that to keep your sanity and your peace they're talking about boundaries here so for the month of june i feel you're going to be tested or your boundaries may be pushed now for the month of july we have the five of pentacles and the seven of cups this is scattered energy uh, for some of you guys, this could be a representation of feeling like you are at a point where there is almost like a feeling of having a lot of opportunities or chances start to come up for you. I don't know why they're saying chances, like an opportunity or a situation where you feel like you can take a chance on someone and make something work it out for some reason, for some of you, um, but I feel that this is only going to drain your energy again very highly what they're telling you. Anything that has to do with the past, let that shit go, Leo. Do not entertain it. It's going to drain your energy and it's going to create a lot of confusion for some of you guys wasted time here. So again, don't entertain anyone that is from your past that is wanting to come back around. Seven of Cups usually indicates illusions, uh, promising you uh, shit that they just cannot come through with. Uh, for others of you, this is scattering your energy. This is um, feeling like you're extremely busy or moving forward in a very positive way in regards to your finances. And then, boom, the ex comes back around, kind of distracting you. What they're telling you is remain focused. Do not entertain anything that is from the past because it's going to draw uh, or drop your energy, I should say. Now, going into, what was this? July, August. Going into August. You yeah, have the lover's card and the wheel of fortune. So for a lot of you guys, partnerships, connections, commitments are coming through in the month of August. For some of you guys, this is, like I said, finding your match. This is a connection that is destined. All right. Destined is what they're telling me. So for a lot of you guys, this could be new energy. For others of you, uh, this could be a person that you're already dealing with throughout the year of 2021, but this is taking it to the next level. The Lover's card is a very potent card when it comes out with the Wheel of Fortune. Why? Because this is talking about a predestined contract or uh, an alignment that's happening uh, to the best of your interest. And this is a person that's coming in alignment with the new you, not with the person from the past but the new Leo that is moving forward. So this is very, very synchronized type of energy, positive energy for you guys. Now, in regards to August, September. <clears throat> so for the month of September, we have here the Three of Swords and the Empress card. You may be dealing with the situation that is very connected with the mother figure for some of you guys. There is some type of feeling... I don't want to use the word betrayed because I don't feel that. I feel that it has more to do like with them letting you down in some way um, or you viewing them in a very different perspective than you did in the past. Uh, there's almost this shifting of energy like I can't believe they did that or um, this energy of I'm no longer going to allow you to, uh, you know, kind of manipulate certain situations. It's like it's taking me back to the boundaries and having to set boundaries for some of you uh the three of swords and the empress card can also represent um hearing news about uh a mother figure someone that you highly respect that is going through some type of hardship uh some type of difficulty in regards to their relationship or their partnership so just try to uh you know approach the situation in a very loving or compassionate way now, for the month of, what was that, uh, June, July, wait, July, August, September, October. Sorry, you guys, I'm doing this freehand. Okay, so for the month of October, we have the Seven of Pentacles and the Hermit. I feel that in this month of October, you guys are starting to slow your pace. You're starting to really be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. You are really tuning in or connecting with spirituality, uh, finding your Zen, finding your balance, um, being able to balance your spiritual life as well as your financial life. And I tell you something, you guys, when we are able to learn to balance our spiritual life as well as our personal life, right? The practical, 
Um, when you're able to balance those and you focus purely on learning to master that, anything is possible. You are able to manifest whatever the fuck you can think of. If you believe it's strong enough, it will happen for you because that is the true soul's purpose to find balance and to find spirituality and the practicality and bringing it into balance. That's how you manifest. So again, I feel that for the month of October, major manifestations are happening here and finding the balance into your spiritual and your physical uh, is going to be very highlighted for you guys. Now, going into the month of November, we have here the Emperor and King of Wands. Very empowered, Leo. Uh, this is the Entrepreneur card for some of you guys starting a new business. For others of you, uh, solidifying a business, taking it to the next level, uh, getting a lot of attention or clientele growing majorly, uh, substantially here for you guys, as well as being feeling very confident in yourself and trusting in yourself and, and really believing in yourself on a deeper level, Leo. I feel that in the month of November, there's this feeling of almost feeling in, unstoppable. Um, and again, if you're able to find that balance in regards to your practical and your spiritual, you are going to be in, unstoppable. So again, very, very positive type of energy here. I feel that you are definitely empowered in the month of November. A situation may arise where it's almost like an opportunity of a lifetime for some of you guys. This is very transformative type of energy. So make that happen. Take that opportunity. Do not hesitate. Do not sit and think about that situation or that opportunity coming through. Jump on it wholeheartedly and you will see major transformation here. Finally, for the month of December, we have the Queen of Cups as well as the Strength card. For some of you guys dealing with water energy, uh, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, for others of you dealing with another Leo or a person that has heavy Leo in their chart. Um, this could be, again, dealing with some type of situation in regards to mother figure. For some of you guys, this could be a grandmother. This could be a older sister type of energy where they're really going to be needing your support or really needing um, some emotional support, emotional uh, backing here and I feel that you are definitely going to be there for them uh, but what they're telling you here is if you have to give constructive criticism give it to them like don't baby them is going to be very important for their life's journey and their life's lessons um, I know that Leos have a tendency especially when we're talking about loved ones you guys have a tendency of being overprotective which I can totally relate uh, but sometimes you have to give them the cold hard truth not in a judgmental way this is in a, what's the word I'm looking for? <clears throat> it's like tough love. And I feel that you're doing them much more good by giving them that tough love than to actually baby them and be like, it's okay, it's the other person's fault. Like, no, if you need to spill it, like spill it so they can learn, so they can grow from that. Because what they're telling you here is don't take the very loving approach uh, in, especially if you're dealing with a sibling. It's like they have to hear it and you be the one to deliver that message. <laughs> For others of you, this could just represent um, being emotionally, uh, feeling like you're extremely emotional, certain things making you cry out of nowhere. This just uh, means that there is an opening in your heart chakra for some of you guys feeling emotionally fulfilled. For others of you getting to the point of being extremely happy in a partnership or relationship where you felt that at some point you were blocked or your heart chakra was blocked because of hurt um, or some type of life lesson that you were going through finally opening up here and being able to receive love is what they're saying. So very positive energy. All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you a lot of insight. If you guys enjoyed, definitely thumbs up like share and comment on this video let me know you guys enjoy it so i can do it next year again at the end of december uh, to prepare you guys going into the new year i want to wish every single one of you guys the brightest of blessings i wish nothing but the best for you guys i wish you guys happy holidays and we will see each other soon take care you guys bye